Uh, hello, good morning. Thank you for having me over here again this year. Um, I will be speaking to you about MRI evaluation for your aortic valve and the uh, aortas themselves. Uh, MRI, magnetic resonance imaging, is basically a, a unique device. We use non-ionizing radiation or magnetic fields. Uh, we use radio frequency pulses, such as your radio wave pulses, and a complicated Fourier transform to create the images. For those who aren't familiar with it, this is an MRI machine. Basically, this is the table, and this is what we call the bore. And it's sort of a longish bore that you kind of go in. Um, it's a little bit smaller than a conventional CT machine, but this is what an MRI machine looks like. Uh, the exam uh, consists of the patients uh, lying on the table on their back. We have EKG leads uh, placed on the chest. Okay. And then a coil, which is a piece of plastic that fits very tightly over the uh, chest itself. You do need on the uh, original exam an IV for a contrast. We give you um, ear earplugs as well as uh, headphones if you like, headphones for some music. And of course, you can have company in there with you because, again, it's no uh, radiation. Uh, the exam consists of multiple breath hold images, which are anywhere between 10 and 20 seconds, depending on your heart rate. Um, we have some sequences which rely on non-breath hold, where you just lie very still in the machine. And the exam, depending on exactly what we're doing, will average from 40 minutes to about an hour. Advantages of MR is that we can look at the body or the organs in multiple planes and uh, multiple projections. We can look at morphology or the anatomy and also look at function. This is a bit of an extreme case. This is a uh, young girl in her uh, 20s who has a bicuspid valve that was not diagnosed and had this massive, um, had this very uh, massive ascending aortic aneurysm as well as a very tight coarctation, a narrowing of her distal uh, thoracic aorta. And to get around this uh, narrowing, she developed these massive collateral, what we call collateral vessels, other channels to get around to try to get blood flow to, to her uh, abdomen. Uh, this is her bicuspid valve again, nice two leaflets. And over here you can see the tight narrowing, which was only a couple of millimeters in diameter, and these great big vessels trying to get around it. She was operated on and is doing quite well, actually. Uh, bicuspid valve with stenosis and ascending aortic aneurysm. And again, this is a large bicuspid aortic valve, two leaflets. You can see that the leaflets, in this particular case, are very thickened. They're nice and black. They're barely opening, and you've got turbulent flow across it. In another projection, this is the same valve. You can see all this black and white going across. And also, not only do you have stenosis, but you have a little jet in the reverse position. This is a regurgitant jet. But we can also see that the left ventricle is still functioning very well, and the mitral valve is normal. And this is, again, just another projection of the same valve and the size of the ascending aortic aneurysm. Um, typical ascending aortic aneurysm, again, massive. This is almost a two and a half times the pulmonary artery. Very, very thin wall, dilated, no significant atherosclerotic disease. And the MR angiogram, again, showing a nice dilated aorta with no other abnormality. Okay, valve and post-repair. This is, you can see, sternal wires, again, giving you minor artifact, but it does not hinder the evaluation of the aorta. And sagittal obliques, or the candy canes. Again, we can look at the ascending aorta. And a little bit of narrowing, but it looks normal. And the bicuspid valve. And over here, we have the pulmonic valve, again, with a little trace aortic ins uh, pulmonic insufficiency. So we can get a lot of information from a single image. Again, we can look at the aortic function. No significant stenosis on this particular patient. And the MR angiogram, no other abnormalities. The great vessels look normal. The abdominal aorta, the renal vessels are all normal, so it's an isolated ascending aortic aneurysm and a bicuspid valve. Post repair. You can, when you have a valve repair, you do have some artifact at the level of the uh, valve itself. And there is some turbulent flow that goes to and fro across the valve, but that's within normal limits. But it does not uh, prevent us from looking at the left ventricle, the mitral valve, the ascending aorta. That's a short axis view of the aorta. 
And then this is another view of the valve. And then this is another case of ascending aortic uh, repair of just the ascending aorta still has the native valve in place. You see a short tube graft or a tube graft extending at the ascending aorta just above the level of the sinuses and it's just proximal to the aortic arch. And this, this is the native uh, bicuspid valve. It's still functioning well, so it was not touched. And then we have the little graft, valve, cuspid valve. And this is the MR angiogram. Now, I do like to have an MR angiogram as a first study post-repair, just to make sure that all the anastomoses and everything else uh, went well. But um, subsequent follow-ups can be done if everything looks good on the MR angiogram as just a non-contrast examination. Okay. So in conclusion, MR is really an excellent way to evaluate complete evaluation of the aorta, the aortic valve, to look at uh, anatomy, morphology, as well as function. And it's an excellent means of screening. Again, the main factor is that it does not involve uh, radiation, and the contrast agent is relatively safe. And as a follow-up procedures, you don't need to have the contrast um, all the time. So it can be a non-contrast study.